James Charles and Fenty Beauty are in huge trouble. Let's talk about it. This is Rich Labs with the hottest news on YouTube. Okay, so first of all, I want to say I'm in natural lighting, and no filter, and I'm shooting from the brand new iPhone 16 Pro. All right, take this out. Look, you can see texture, you can see fine lines, you can see pores. But overall, like the skin looks great. It's just like in natural light on a really good high definition camera, you can see everything. Well, I wanted to shoot this and I wanted to talk about Juvia's Place. And they came out with the shortbread like setting powder and they also have the new I Am Magic Pyramid Puff. And I wanna try these out and then we'll get into the video with the drama, with the James Charles and everything else. So we'll get there. Raw review, natural light, no gimmicks, no games. Let's, let's get it started. So anytime I get a setting powder, I just like to shake it up. One of the things I like about the Juvia's Place setting powder that just came out is the fact that it is talc free. I'm obsessed with anything that's talc free. Okay, so I see with me because I wear a lot of makeup, so I am breathing in talc and if I can limit that, even though that's so much better, you know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm shaking it up. Um, honestly, there's several holes in here and it shakes up really well. I do like that, but for me, I'm gonna keep it real. I like to have a lot, a lot, a lot, yeah. So like this right here, that's what I do. And with all my setting powders, the little, the plastic sifter, I take that out because I need a lot. When you wear this much makeup, red carpets, parties, bar mitzvahs, backyard barbecues, you know, I like to do full glam. Okay, so here's the puff, brand new out the packaging. I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Now there is a smaller one to this, but I have a big old face. So I know the help I can get, just like that. That is a lot of powder that it picked up. I'm just gonna dab some excess away. Okay, now you guys can see, play very close attention. You guys can see everything. You know what? This could all, this could literally just be used by itself just because of the color that's in it. And I wanna be honest with you, the color of this one is called, I have it right here, shortbread. I felt like this one fit my skin tone the best. And look, look at that oil, what's it absorb? Ooh la 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 la, mm -hmm. It's almost like a powder foundation almost without even trying to be, okay. So I'm gonna let that sit for a few, and I'm gonna get a brush, and I'm just gonna like wipe it all away, all right? So here we go, the brush here, hang on it. Look how it just, it really, it really just fell into all the crevices, all the pores, smoothed everything out. You saw how the face looked in the very beginning. I should blend it out more, but yeah, I'm not mad at it. I look really smooth, okay? Look at that. Ooh, that was real. That was real. My skin looks softer. Mm hmm That was like a real review. Okay. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Thank you, Juvia's Place, for sending this to me. I love you guys so much. It is messy, like all setting powders are. I like to put on like a shirt. When I do my makeup, I usually put on a shirt that I don't mind getting it dirty. Do a full beat, because makeup is messy. Okay. All right, so let's get on with this drama. So... All right, so James Charles, we talked about this before, that his pressed powders, pressed blushes with the cream, how it was causing people, some customers, they were noticing that it was starting to bubble up or something. And James Charles put out a statement and said that it was condensation, and people were complaining about it, they were scared that, you know, was it mold? Was it this? There was all these accusations being thrown out there. Well, Jen Loves Reviews actually got in contact with a chemist and here's what she had to say. So shout out to her and the chemist. Here we go, roll it. You're an ingredient nerd like I am. Go check it out anywhere you listen to podcasts. It is so freaking good. Anyway, so I reached out to Perry and I was like, Perry, here's the video. Here's the ingredient list. Please tell me that this isn't a scandal because I don't think this is a scandal. This is what his email said, quote, well, mm -hmm. it's hard to say specifically why a formula is separating, but it comes down to two things, mixing and heat. This formula relies on tiny droplets of oil to be dispersed in waxes. If the formulas are not properly mixed during manufacturing, that could lead to separation of oils from the waxes. The other possibility is that if the product was heated up to a temperature that made the waxes less stiff and then later cooled, this could lead to the oils leaking out of the wax matrix and you could get separation. Mm -hmm. That could easily happen to a product left in a person's car or their bathroom window or in their mailbox maybe. Since this is an anhydrous formula, no water formula, it is unlikely to be a microbial contamination 
issue. Doesn't seem like much of a scandal, though. You frequently get problems like this in manufacturing, especially a new product. Products that have been around a while have gone through the same types of issues, but they are able to adjust production conditions to fix them. I do not see any scandal here. Hello, editing Jen here. Uh, I forgot to address James's use of the word condensation, which you've probably figured out by now is not correct because there's no water in the cream blushes. Scientifically, the word might be something like coalesce or aggregation, uh, maybe something like oil accumulation or oil pooling would be the most accurate, not condensation, but... Honestly, I feel like in the grand scheme of things, we knew what he was trying to say, and the word choice for me personally isn't a huge deal. It's more of a technicality, but technically, it's not correct. So I figured I would mention it because I know some of y'all are going to clock that. All right, back to the video. And that was what I was thinking, too, because what I noticed was that they take the oil spot and they wait for the light to hit it just right so that it looks like mold. To me, that's f***ed up. I, I think that's f***. I, no matter how, it doesn't matter how I feel about James. To do that, I think, is so messed up. And what we've learned here on this channel over many years is that mm -hmm. mold grows best in a water-based formula. There is no water in this product. Is it possible for it to go moldy? Probably maybe i don't know it's more likely that it would go rancid oils more likely go rancid but mold no no not mold we see mold in things like concealers and stuff things that are water-based not things that are cream and oil based and one thing i love though is that on dante's video people just aren't buying what he's saying which i love uh, people are noting that the patrick ta blushes had the same issue i couldn't find any pictures of that i did find one person asking about it on reddit but i couldn't find pictures of it mm. if that video went viral and if james lost money because of his false too late the blushes are fine <laughs> james is right just wipe it off it's fine there doesn't seem to be any reason safety wise that people can't use them i do hate when james is right but credit where credit is due so there you go so when it comes to james charles blushes there's no drama behind it and that's coming from a cosmetic chemist and other influencers online. So let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. This is Rich Lush with the hottest news on. All right, listen, there's no drama with his, you know, whatever. But I will say this. If I bought it and it looked like that, I would have to return it because I don't want it. That's just me. I, you know, I have to, I double down. I'm doubling down on what I said. I'm sticking down to my roots. If I bought it, if I bought that and it looked like that, I wouldn't want it. So if some people, if you just want to wipe it off, go ahead. But apparently there's no drama according to the chemist and Jen loves. I still wouldn't want to use a product like that. But if you don't mind it and you're a big fan, go ahead and do you. Okay. So, but I wonder what you guys think about that. Okay. Now we're moving on because Fenty Beauty got into a huge drama. Well, Fenty Hair, rather. You know, Fenty is owned by LVMH, which is Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, and it's one of the one of the most it's one of the most richest brands on the planet. Okay, and LVMH, I believe they own Sephora as well, but they own a lot of companies. They also own Fenty and Fenty Hair, Fenty Beauty, and all these things like that, right? And Rihanna is the face of that. Well, now that they're getting into hair and, you know, Fenty is really promoting that like their hair is made for a lot of different people. So they had these pop up events where you can come get your hair done and fans were signing up for it. Well, one person who went and um, she did not have a good experience and she is very, very, very upset. So here's what she had to say. Here we go. Roll it. Do I look like someone who's just come back? Fenty hair salon? Fenty hair. This is Fenty product in my in my hair. That is the edge control in my hair. Let's get into it. So I booked a appointment to have a voluminous style that I had a website. Um, the the salon does say that it caters to all hair textures, as do the product. So I was feeling confident. So I came in today, ten o'clock, and I sat down in the chair. The hairstylist didn't really say hello to me. She didn't really acknowledge me. It was very very weird. The girl at the reception did, but as soon as she handed me over to my black stylist, um, she, I was like hi. And I was just like, oh, just to let you know, my hair is not came at you months ago, like about six months ago. It's grown out. 
up now but my hair is natural and it cut i was basically doing the consultation for her, for her like she didn't once ask me a question about my hair not a, not a single question before she like she wasn't interested in my hair before she actually started pulling out the product like there wasn't any consultation at all she showed me the product she doesn't really talk me through what the product does or how they can work the hair or to strengthen the hair she just gives me a very like vague summary of it and then she just starts putting in my hair um and then she started applying my hair um she it, it's like she didn't know how to blow dry natural hair it was very bizarre i believe that from the moment i showed up in front of her she was just annoyed at having at the prospect of having to do my hair she started to blow dry my hair but she didn't have the correct blow drying tools and like i did mention this to her i was like why don't you have the uh, proper blow drying tools for um, afro kinky hair and she was just like oh these are the only ones we were given i did ask i was like okay fine like you can definitely make it work but she wasn't making it work she was literally dragging the comb from the root of my hair down ends as she was applying the heat and i did mention i was just like hey my hair's tender my head is tender head but also you're, it's supposed to be from the tip to the root. We'll come back to what she said about that later on. So she did the blow dry. It was a very, very mid blow dry. In fact, it was barely a blow dry because a lot of my root were still uh, in its kinkiest texture. It wasn't actually blown out form, which you need for it to be straightened. Like, but also I have a red carpet. So I was like, I'm definitely gonna sit here and do my hair never gonna come here ever again so once the blow drying was done she brought out the straighteners the straightening um was looking really good um my hair was um and i made sure i did a protein treatment moisture treatment washed my hair thoroughly the night before so that when i came in we're good to go so she's straightening the hair and i've i noticed i was like oh wow she's really straightness because i'm not feeling anything like on my scalp like any heat on my scalp come to find out when she starts getting to the front and i can see her better she's actually not even straightening the root she's just avoiding pleat and when it was brought up she was like oh um i don't want to burn your scalp or i don't want to get scalp and it's just like but if you're a professional stylist you should know how to be able to straighten natural hair without getting heat on the scalp so as i started really push back on she kind of got an attitude and she was like listen like your hair's not so that's why it's gonna be harder it's natural hair um and at the end of the day you know it's not gonna you know like someone else's hair like if even if i straighten it it's gonna lose all of the um you know straightened texture because your hair's prefer and i'm like if you are a qualified hairstylist for black hair you should know how to do a blow dry and straightening which is basically the latter half of a silk press and that hair should should withhold that heat for at least two, three days. Some people, their silk press can last them a week or more. Obviously it's down to upkeep. And then to be fair, I am liking like the little like waves and the texture and the curls and stuff. And then I do mention to her, hey, like the way you're combing my hair, like you're combing it straight from the root down here. Again, this, this was mentioned before, by the way, this is not the first time I've pushed back. It, I was pushing back a lot, which is why she was catching enough. And so um, she said, um, there's nothing wrong with um, the, the tip of your hair, like it's healthy. And I'm like, yeah, like even if it's healthy, you're still not supposed to be combing from, it's very much giving the aunties on like, you know, if you go to Peckham or any of your hair and they're just combing it straight like that because they don't care about natural hair. They don't care about the safe texting it. They don't care about the breakage. They don't even care that it's connected to your scalp hurting you they they just don't care it's almost like they're angry at the natural hair i was like no you're supposed to do it like gradually building up here here and then get the at root and at scalp area and she was just like look it's going to hurt it's going to hurt when your hair is if your hair was relaxed like mine it wouldn't be that bad this is getting really long join me for part two and she was just like look you have natural hair so yes it's going to hurt it's going to hurt when we're doing your hair because your hair's natural if your hair was relaxed like mine it wouldn't be that bad I, I have never felt like such an inconvenience just because my hair is natural. I felt such like such an inconvenience. The, the way she spoke to me made me feel like I was just wasting her time because I had natural hair. I felt so like just an inconvenience. Like, oh, you ugly nappy headed girl. Like, why did you think you were going to come here and get a nice style style session that's literally what it was giving it was giving what made you think she was like yeah like when you go on our website just because it says that these these styles are applicable like we're not even supposed to be putting heat on natural hair like if you come and get heat damage then you're gonna say it's my fault and i'm like there's ways to straighten um black hair 4c hair without giving it heat damage that's up to you if if, if that's up to your qualifications you should be able to do that 
luckily I don't care too much about heat damage. I mean, my hair's in a pixie, like I cut my hair very often, but it was just, it was a sham. It was an absolute sham. Um, she then put the edge control, Fenty hair edge control in my hair. As you can see, I don't know where the edge where the edges are being controlled. Not sure. All it's done is left white residue in their hair. And it's also made my hair like sticky and like clumpy and a little bit itchy actually right here. Just not nice. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do because I've got a red carpet tonight. But either way, like Fenty hair, super disappointing. If you say that you are a, are a salon and a hair care provider that is for all textures, then be that. If you can't do it, don't do it. Don't say that you can do it. I'm so tired of these hairstylists and these hair companies, um, also hair salons, being like, oh, come in. Yes, we can do all textures. And then us uh, black girls with 4C hair come out traumatized and our, our scalps are hurting and our hair looks like crap. We should be able to go in a salon that says it's for all textures and come out with our hair actually looking good. Like, be so for real. What's going, what, like... I mean, I guess it's, it's still straight, so that's proved her wrong. Fenty hair, please. Like, this kind of product does not work for us. Don't say it works for us when it doesn't. Please, do better. Fenty hair have got back in touch, so you need to stop tagging this lady, okay? She probably just wants to spend time with her family. Stop. So without divulging the exact details, um, Fenty Hair were very apologetic about the experience I had and they have extended a really kind invitation for me to come back into the salon to have a better experience with a more trained hairstylist. As of right now, I don't feel comfortable taking them up on that offer, mainly because of the way the first experience was just so bad. And actually, since my experience of going in, I've seen several other people go in and have not so great experiences with their hair, whether it be 4C, 4B or 4A. And so for now, it's not something I'm going to be doing, but I really appreciate them actually reaching out. I think in the long run, though, I really would like this to be a learning curve for brands and some constructive feedback for brands as well. 4C hair should not be an afterthought. It should be part and parcel of the hair experience, especially when you're thinking of reaching out to different types of ethnic groups. 4C hair should always be considered as part of the customer, customer base. So many black women, so many black people have 4C hair and I'm tired of us being treated like we weren't considered in the first place and this isn't just about Fenty this is about brands in general I've seen other influencers have terrible experiences purely because the stylist doesn't know how to work with 4C hair around the time my video blew up there was an, another creator as well having a terrible experience and the fact that this is so triggering for all of us is because it's happened to all of us at least once there's not a single black woman I know that this has never happened to that she's never had a bad experience in the salon on because they didn't know what to do with her hair. I saw so many people saying that, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is a black stylist, but this goes for black stylists as well. They need to be trained in working with 4C, 4A, Afro kinky hair. Like it, it cannot be something that's just left like and forgotten about. That's what makes it so upsetting and triggering. And not only do they need to be trained in working with Afro kinky hair, but they need to be taught to appreciate it. I can't believe that that has to be said. And if they have any anti-black sentiments, they need to go and do the work to make sure that they're not now putting that sentiment into the sessions they have with clients. Like it's deeply anti-black, it's triggering, um, it's deeply upsetting. And in some cases it can be traumatizing because it can bring up so many feelings from the past. I think a lot of people are also mentioning that, you know, this might to be to do with the stylist rather than the actual products. But as we could all see, that edge control was not actually controlling the edges. Like it was not controlling the edges at all. Um, I don't think I had even one minute of control. Like it literally just sprang back up. Um, and I'm actually not one to slick my edges constantly but if, if we are saying that an edge control works for all textures I'm tired of people be acting like oh this edge control doesn't work for 4C hair oh well no like shout out to Gloria like we actually need to be demanding way more of these brands we are, we are spending so much on their products some of these Fenty products cost £35, £30, £20 
that is in in my in, in my opinion a mid-range to luxury uh price range and so it should do what it says on the tin is like if you say that it does one thing then let it do that thing loving my style at the moment it's very different um it's the Korobush style um a lot of other um, ethnic groups uh, including the Fulani, Fulani ethnic group have uh, their own version and their own name for this but it's a style that has like has its history all over africa it's london fashion week so i really wanted to spotlight uh, nigerian styles i always want to spotlight nigerian fashion as well nigerian designers um so i'm really happy i was able to do that we're on day four of fashion week so forgive me if i sound a little bit like blase blase um but yeah i'm a little bit tired but i just wanted to come on update you all and also update you with my new style i'll be doing a lot more london fashion week content this week um and yeah thank you so much for the, all of the follows i really appreciate it um try not to get too heated like i'm over it i've changed my style like that's how like over it i am like as much as the issue is, is like important the actual circumstance like it's done like I've moved on and I'll be changing this um, and something interesting did come in the post so I'll be updating you with that okay grab a snack and come on back I will say this when I watched the video I was kind of shocked I was kind of shocked that Louis Vuitton more Hennessy dropped the ball that fancy hair dropped the ball in that situation nothing's perfect I'm sure that Rihanna is not the one picking these people to do the hair it's delegated people are hired to do those things with that being said I can honestly I can say that you know this person really wasn't that experienced they had a bad day they were frustrated you know imagine being a hairstylist you got hired for a pop-up event and you're doing different people's hairs and textures all different all day all day you're doing Caucasian hair, you're doing Latin hair, you're doing Afro hair, you're doing a lot of different people types of hair. Not only that, and then there's like subcategories of types of hairs within a hair category. So you really gotta be well-rounded and I just don't think that they're really set up for that success, right? Honestly, it just seemed like, hey, come down here and get your hair washed. That's the type of vibe I think they should just direct it that way because there is a lot, a lot of different type of hairstyles and types, especially if, you know, like me, I get my hair permed a lot, okay? When I get my hair permed, it blocks me from it getting colored. I can't wash it for a couple of days or weeks rather. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's all these different factors. I can't put certain stuff in it because it will mix and my hair could fall out. So it's very scary when you're having people come to your chair, you're not asking them proper questions because if someone like me had my hair permed, and let's say they want to dye it the next day, it does a big, big, big problem. You're, there's going to be a big cause for confusion and out of the abundance of concern, it's scary. So, you know, at this time, I feel like Fenty Hair is, is not going to stop it from being a big brand like it already is. People are still going to buy it. But I think that they really do need to like reformulate how they do things when they have these pop-up events like that. Not only that, they're very, very, very expensive to do. So anyways, let me know what you think about that drama in the comments down below. This is Rich Lush with the hottest news on